right, y'all, let's jump into the word. Um, I have been ministering on uh, this message series called Why the Church? Why the Church? And, uh, and I actually, I thought, and I had actually announced that this Sunday would be uh, the finale, the grand finale of this series. But, but as I was preparing for this last message, I really felt clearly that uh, from the Lord to continue because there is another word uh, that's a part of this series that I want to make sure that we, um, that, that, that is shared, um, that gets out as well. And so next Sunday, we'll actually conclude uh, this message ser series, the Lord willing, right? We follow the Holy Spirit here, but this is part three of the series. Why the church? And I would add actually as a subtitle for this message, the inside outside game, the inside outside game for some of you sports fans, you may um, uh, be familiar with that phrase, and, and I'll touch upon that phrase uh, a little later, but the inside-outside game. We have been in the book of Acts uh, talking about what the early church looked like, and we actually started first in the book of Matthew as Jesus um, kind of shared with his disciples his final instructions before he left this earth for good. And, and he commissioned his disciples to go out and spread his message. He said in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20, he says, Go ye therefore make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them all that I have instructed you to do. That was his charge to his disciples. And, and right before he left the earth for good, for good, uh, he actually uh, commanded them. He told them uh, to go to Jerusalem and wait there. Wait for the promise. Jesus had been promising uh, the disciples that upon his departure, he wouldn't leave them nor forsake them. He would actually ascend to them the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And so as Jesus was about to depart this earth, he told them to go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise, the promise of the Holy Spirit. And on last, our last time that we uh, gathered where I ministered this two Sundays ago, I talked about how the Holy Spirit uh, came upon them when they were all gathered, when they were obedient to Jesus, and they went to Jerusalem, and they stayed there waiting on the promise. The Holy Spirit fell upon them, and Lord have mercy. Didn't things change? Things changed uh, abundantly. Uh, the, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they began to speak in other languages. The Bible uh, says that they were speaking in other tongues, languages that that they had never studied or ever spoken before. They were speaking in other people's language because the power of the Holy Spirit had fallen on them and it had given them this outward expression of God's power in their life. You know, when we talk about the Holy Spirit, a lot of times in the church world, we talk about the Holy Spirit and connect that directly with speaking in tongues. And I and I would say that um, the the outward expression of speaking in tongues or in another language uh, isn't the the pinnacle of what the Holy Spirit has. It's actually one of the outward expressions because when the pot when the Holy Spirit fell upon them, they actually received power to do things that they couldn't do in their own power. The Bible says that they had, uh, that as a result of the Holy Spirit falling upon them, signs, wonders, and miracles was done in their presence. And, and, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, they were able to do things that they couldn't do within their own power. And so this morning we pick up in Acts chapter 2 again. Acts chapter 2, where when, when the Holy Spirit fell upon them, uh, that actually was the beginning of uh, the church. It was the first church service. It was the first church service uh, where uh, they actually... Uh, put forward what we are able to see today, or we actually have a direct connection today. What we're experiencing this morning, even though it's virtual, it is a, an expression of the church that was launched back in the book of Acts. And so in Acts chapter 2, verse 44, we're going to begin reading, and we're going to read about four verses here. Acts chapter 2, verse 44. 
And it says, Now all who believe were together and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. See right here, we see the outgrowth of the early church uh, was from the church to the world. See, the church grew by leaps and bounds because uh, the church went from inside to outside in the world. See, it, it, it went from the temple, verse 46, to house to house. You see that? Verse 46 says, so continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. It's the inside, outside game. See, I'm a Lakers fan. I, I, I'm a Los Angeles Lakers fan. Yes, I am. I mean, I go back to showtime. I'm talking about 17 NBA championships. I'm talking about 38 years of being a fan uh, of the Los Angeles Lakers. See, uh, I like LeBron James. He plays for the Lakers right now. I do. I'm a fan of LeBron James, but I'm a bigger fan of the Lakers. And so if LeBron isn't with the Lakers, you know, I'll still, you know, I like him and all, but but I'm not going to root for him because I'm going to root for the Lakers, the Los Angeles Lakers. I'm talking about Showtime. I'm talking about Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, James Worthy. I'm talking about Kobe and Shaq. I'm talking about the good times and the bad times. I am a fan, right? I'm a fan of the Los Angeles Lakers. And, and, and even right now, the playoffs are going on right now. And I know my brother Tony with the Miami Heat and, and Cedric. I know, yes, y'all are rooting for the Miami Heat. Y'all are looking good. Uh, but uh, they are testing me right now because the Los Angeles Lakers are at home. Didn't even make the playoffs. Didn't deserve to make the playoffs. It's a challenging time right now. But yet, I'm still a Lakers fan. I'll never leave you or forsake you, Lakers. Uh, but, but, but one thing that I've seen over my 38 years of being a Los Angeles Lakers fan is this. During their winning seasons, during their championship runs, there's this formula formula that they have, have figured out how to embrace during their time. And it is, it is this winning formula of having a strong inside and a strong outside game. See, it's all about the inside-outside game. They have, they have developed this formula. It doesn't matter what coach is coaching at that time, whether it's uh, Phil Jackson or whether uh, it's, it's the current uh, one or whether it's Pat Riley. Yes, well, regardless of who the coach is, there's this formula that they have developed that, that wins championships. It's the formula that has led them to 17 championships. It's this inside outside game and typically the inside game has this big man uh that 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 stays close to the basket that stays inside the paint and it has a smaller man right uh who can dribble well who can shoot well who can who can get to the basket if they need to but that can shoot um uh, uh far away from uh the paint as well and so in, in the course of the years of uh, the los angeles lakers you had magic and Kareem. Magic was the, was the outside game. Kareem was the inside game. You had Kobe and Shaq. Kobe was the outside game. Shaq was the inside game. You even had not as, not as prominent, but they still won a couple of championships this way. You had Kobe and Paul Gasol. Right now, uh, LeBron James won the championship a couple of years ago. It was LeBron James and Anthony Davis. It's not, not as a, 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 a basic as that, but it's generally that type of game that wins championships. The inside, 
outside game. The inside game is different from the outside game, but they work together for the common good to win the game, to win championships. The inside outside game is what works in basketball, but let me tell you something. In scripture, we see that the inside game working with the outside game wins in the church as well. And what you see here in Acts chapter 2 is the inside and the outside game working together in unison, unison, unity. <laughs> they are working together, you all. They are working together for the common good of advancing God's church. You remember we asked the question, why the church? Because it's God's idea. Why the church? Because Jesus launched it and planted it. Why the church? Because it's through the church that this world uh, can and should be transformed. And, and the church cannot just stay within the confines of the four walls. The church cannot stay within the confines of people that just walk and talk like you or share your common beliefs. Uh, the growth of the church will happen when the church goes from the inside to the outside as well. And so in Acts chapter 2, we see the Holy Spirit came and, and fell on the disciples. Uh, that's Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through about 43. Uh, we see that we, when the Holy Spirit fell, we see all these things that happen inside the church. We see what happened. We see that when the Holy Spirit fell, um, people began to speak in different languages, in different tongues. And, and when the Holy Spirit fell and they began to speak in different languages, Peter started stood up and he began preaching. And, and, and as Peter was preaching, people began to respond. And when they respond, they began to accept Jesus. And, 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 and as they began to accept Jesus, they began to say, okay, I want to be baptized. You remember when Jesus told the disciples, go ye therefore and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they had began responding to the preached word. And then they were baptized and then they uh, studied the word, the, the instructions of Jesus. They were studying the Bible. And then it said they broke bread together. They gave communion like what we do typically every first Sunday. All of this is happening inside the first church service, right? We see in there that they were praying for one another. They were praying to God. They was praying uh, going forward and power uh, began to be received and, and power was, was imminent all throughout that early service, y'all. That service, Jesus told them to go to Jerusalem and wait there and wait for the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit came, we see how the church began to manifest. Sounds very much like the church today, right? All those elements that I just laid out that happened in Acts chapter 2, starting in verse 1, we see that many of those same elements in our church service. You've seen that this morning. We've had, we've had singing. We've had a praying. We, uh, uh, and, 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 and when we were in person, we had the giving of communion. We had a, a response. We had to preach word, right? I'm preaching right now. We had a response to the word. We, we asked people to, to give their lives to Christ. We even ask people to join the church, not just transforming faith church, but join the church. Many of those same elements back in Acts chapter two, we see right now in our modern day church. It may look a little different, right? They didn't have electronic instruments. They didn't have drums. They didn't have a keyboard. They didn't have a bass guitar. They didn't have microphones and speakers and, and all the things that we have now. But the basic elements that we see in Acts chapter 2 at the beginning of the church, we see it also right now. It looks like what we do here today. But here's the point here. The point is that when you go back to scripture, you can point to why we do what we do in the church here today. See, the reality is many people question the church. Why do I need the church? I don't do the church. I don't do the church. I'm a spiritual person, right? It's just me and Jesus. I don't need nobody else. I don't need to go to church to have a strong relationship with Christ. And I want to beg to differ with you this morning. I, I beg to differ because the church isn't our idea. 
It isn't a man-made concept or construct. It's right here in scripture in Acts chapter two, we see the church was launched and, and it's through the church that, that people came to know Jesus and began to grow in Jesus and receive the kind of power that only Jesus could provide. So yes, they needed the church back then. I don't know why we think we are uh, that different that we don't need the church today. The church is God's idea. And if it's God's idea, it ought to be our ideas. Time out for us coming forward with our own bright ideas and, and things of uh, that we think the way the things ought to go. No, we need to go back to what Jesus said is important. And if you go back to Acts chapter two, even in that early church uh, worship experience, that first church worship uh, experience, we see there that everything that went on was all about Christ. And so I would submit that uh, on Sunday mornings when we are worshiping in the church building, in the church facility, I would even have you uh, keep your eyes wide open and be able to ask and answer the question, is what we are doing today or what the things that we're doing each and every Sunday, is it pointing back to Christ? And if it's not, I would say, well, we might need to throw it out because look at what happened uh, in Acts chapter two in the early, uh, the, the first church service, the preaching. Peter stood up and began preaching, right? Telling people what was going on. Peter was simply preaching about Christ. And when people responded to the preaching, they were responding to the preaching and accepting Christ, right? When, when they were baptized, they were uh, being baptized uh, in, uh, in water, but their, their life was now being transformed through water in Christ. When they studied the word, they were studying the words and instructions of Christ. When they were giving communion, when they were breaking bread, they were remembering the sacrifice of Jesus through the breaking of bread and the giving of wine. When they were praying, they were praying in Christ, y'all. Everything that we do on Sunday mornings in the inside game has to be focused on Jesus. That first worship service, that first church uh, experience was all about and only about Christ. Everything that took place uh, was all about and focused on Christ. That should be the focus of every church worship experience. Jesus said to his disciples in, in the gospel of John, in the book of John, as he was preparing his disciples uh, for his uh, ultimate arrest, death, burial, and resurrection in John chapter 15. 15 verse 5 Jesus says this he says I am the vine you are the branches he who abides in me and I in him will bear much fruit for without me you can do nothing Jesus said look I'm trying to prepare you now that that life after me still has to be connected to me he says I am the vine you are the branches he who abides in me and I in him will bear much fruit for without me, you can do nothing. Jesus is letting his disciples know that abundant life looks like a continual connection and focus on him. Everything that we do, our inside game in the church, our outside game outside of the church has to be focused on Christ. We must abide in Christ. That word abide in the Greek uh, is meno. M-E-N-O, meno, and it means to remain or stay or continue. When you remain, you stay or continue in Jesus, you will bear much fruit. Do y'all want to bear fruit this morning? You want to bear fruit in your life? You want your life to have meaning? You want your uh, life to be a, be a life that is pleasing to God, where God can smile down upon you and say, well done, thy good and faithful service. You cannot have a fruitful life without Jesus. That's even in our worship experience. If we're coming in the building and we're coming into worship and we're not focused on Jesus, I'm telling you, we're just wasting our time. And no fruit will come from that. So let's go back to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. The disciples 
<laughs> when Jesus told them to go to Jerusalem, they were there and, 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 and they were abiding in Jesus. They were remembering Jesus because Jesus had, had, had died and he had been resurrected, but he had began to show himself to many of his uh, followers and, and they remained where Jesus told them to be in Jerusalem. And, and once the Holy Spirit fell upon them, they received this power. And this power is what launched the first church in a room that Jesus had told them to, they, to, 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 to remain. The, the power of the Holy Spirit gave them what they needed to launch the first church. But then a transition occurred. After the Holy Spirit came in Acts chapter 2, 1 through about verse 43, after the Holy Spirit came, after people began speaking in different language, after signs, wonders, and miracles occurred, after preacher, uh, Peter preached the first sermon of the church, after pe uh, people received the word and the word, uh, and they received the word of Jesus and, and they accepted Jesus in their life, after uh, people were baptized in Jesus, after they had received communion through the breaking of bread, remembering Jesus after they had this phenomenal worship church experience through the power of the Holy Spirit. After all of that, there was a shift. There was a shift, y'all, from the inside to the outside. Y'all remember the Lakers? Remember the inside-outside game? Winning championships are, are won because of a strong inside game and a strong outside game in the church of, of, of our Savior Jesus Christ. In Acts chapter 2, verse 44, it says, Now all who believe were together and had all things in common. They were still in the church, right? 45, and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. That means they had to transition from in the church to outside the church. They couldn't sell their goods and, and, and possessions inside the church. No, they had to leave that worship experience and they had to go and sell all of their possessions. And then they divided them among all for anyone who had need. Verse 46. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. That's the shift from the temple to house to house, right? They ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. Verse 47, praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. They moved you all from the inside, the temple, to the outside, house to house. Do y'all see that? Y'all see that? They went from worshiping in church, right? Let's put it in our modern day uh, vernacular. They were worshiping on Sunday morning, like what we're doing, right? But they were in person. They were worshiping, and then they left the, the, the church. They left the Lord's house, and they, they, they took Jesus from inside the house to outside the house, inside the church, to house to house in their regular life, in their communities, on their job, uh, in their relationships, in their family. They, 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 they took Jesus from inside the church and they brought Jesus with them outside the church uh, to, to live as God had called for them to live. See, the church grew the church grew in verse 47 because of the worship in the temple, verse 46a, right? Um, uh, so continuing daily with one accord in the temple. And because, right, the church grew also because they were going house to house breaking bread. That's the second part of verse 46. And breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. So look at what happened, verse 47, after they praised God, they, they had favor with all people. You see that? They, they were inside the house. They were inside the church, right, worshiping God. Then they took the worship of God and they went outside the church, going from house to to house and and in verse 47 they said they were praising God but then they had favor with all people and because of that favor with all people the church grew the Lord added to the church daily 
Now, here's, here's, a, here's a functional reality of church as we know. We worship on what we call the Sabbath, right? Sunday morning. We, we worship God every Sunday morning. Well, many of us do. My prayer is that we all understand the concept. I know, let me take a little, little, little point of personal privilege here. I know that um, uh, the data shows that people uh, don't feel the need to worship every Sunday anymore, right? We know the statistics show that um, the, the, the church-going behavior, behavior or habits of people is going down year after year after year. And this pandemic just uh, sped up that, that trajectory. But I'm here to tell you right now that if you are a believer in Jesus and you understand uh, that the church is God's idea that Jesus started the church, that it was that it was laid out based upon Jesus' instructions. I'm here to tell you that, yes, we need to be in the house of the Lord each and every Sunday. I'm even talking to myself because even when we launched Transforming Faith Church, I was like, do we have to worship every Sunday? Right. Do I have to preach every Sunday? Why can't we we switch it up a little bit? And, and and I'm here to tell you that the intentionality of the church is God's idea. Worshiping Jesus together collectively is God's idea where where we're uh, reading the word, where we're studying the word, where we're receiving the preached word, where we're making decisions uh, 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 for Jesus, for our life. It could be uh, accepting Christ for the first time. It can be uh, recommitting our life. It could be making some tangible decisions in our life. It's within the church, the inside game that God has established for our good. What better do you have to do on Sunday mornings? Yeah, you're sleeping, you're chilling, or you're doing stuff that, that isn't producing the kind of good that God wants to see in your life. The fruit that is, that is born because of your abiding with Jesus. Is it, what could you be doing that's more important than continuing to worship Jesus, growing closer, abiding in Jesus? It'd be different if during that same time you were deeply in the word, praying and, and committed. But we know, let's be, let's be honest. Let's let's just be real right now. We are not replacing that time that we are not in the church with something fruitful that is in alignment with God. Right. We, we, we might be replacing it with something else that's good. But is it the better thing? But I digress. I digress. God set up the church for us to both have the inside game and the outside game. He wants us to, to focus on Jesus within the church building, within our worship experience and our worship setting. But he wants us to take Jesus from house to house in our life. And I'm not saying this morning that you need to be going around preaching and teaching uh, the gospel. What God wants you to do is take Jesus uh, from inside the church uh, to outside the church through your life. Just show up and be the light that, that God has called for you to be. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, he says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. The light of your life in Jesus uh, will shine bright enough that the outside world, outside the church, um, uh, people outside the church in your life will see uh, the God in you. And they'll say, what must I do to be saved? They'll say, what must I do to course correct, to, to, to get my life on the right path? If you just stand up and be the light, if you take the, the light of Jesus with you out into the world and live like you know God wants you to live, to live according to the instructions of Jesus, to live according to the Bible with integrity, biblical integrity, to live according to the way that God wants wants you to live. Jesus just, just wants you to take him with you back into your home, back into your job, back into your community, back into your family, back to where you live and dwell. The outside game 
let your light so shine upon, among men and women. The inside outside game. Take your worship of Jesus inside the church and continue that worship through how you are living your life. Take it back outside. But let's not get it twisted, Joe. Championship caliber teams that master the inside and the outside game understand that they need one another, right? The big man and the small man, they need each other. The inside game who, who stays close to the basket sometimes needs to take the ball when he or she, let's, I'm sorry, I've been talking in the masculine vernacular, but I'm talking about the Lakers, so that, that's a male team. But, but he or she, the big man or woman who is close to the paint, sometimes they get double team. They, they get overwhelmed. They, they, they get their enemy pouncing upon them, and, and they can't put the, the basket in the goal like they want to, and so what do they do? They kick it out. They, they throw the pass out to the, to the uh, outside game to the smaller man or woman who's out there waiting to get the ball and to, to line up for the shot or to dribble to take it inside to, to lay it up. They're doing, uh, they're working together, understanding that they need one another. You want this community to be changed. You want to have favor with all people? Well, some of us want to forget about the inside game and just say, I'm just going to do good on the outside, right? I'm going to just do good. That's why all these social uh, organizations, these advocacy organizations, these social welfare organization has risen up because they have decided to do good separate from the church. I'm not speaking against that. Because everyone is not a believer. Everyone is not a believer in Christ. We still need to have good done in the world. But what I'm saying, if you are a believer, the good that you do has to be connected with Christ. It has to be connected with, with our Lord and Savior. And so if we were to take our worship inside the church and then take it to the outside to take our good works from the inside and take it to the outside, this world will be changed. The, the drama, the trauma that we are seeing, the, the, the war that is going on, you'll see peace. The, the high unemployment, you'll see people with good paying jobs. The, the, the poor academic outcomes, you'll see uh, uh, young scholars rising up and, and mastering uh, uh, education to see better educational outcomes. The crime that you're seeing in pockets all across our country will be uh, abolished because the church is standing up and taking in its inside game and saying, I'm going to take it to the world. I'm telling you, the church is the answer. The church is the answer because it's God's idea. God wants us to take what we do inside in the church and take it to the outside, but you can't have one without the other. God wants you to uh, connect your faith, here it is, with your works, James. He wants you to connect what your worship is with your life is on the outside. See, you can't have your good works and not have Christ, or, or you cannot have Christ and decide you're not going to do good works. Jesus said, when you did it to the least of these, you have done it to me. When you fed the hungry, when you gave drink to the thirsty, when you gave clothes to the naked, you were doing that to me. Your good works has to be connected to your worship on the inside. It's the inside, outside to a game. They work together. They are married together. They can't be divorced. God does not like divorce. God wants you to be married. He wants you to marry your inside and your outside game. And it's through the church that we saw the Holy Spirit working. It's through the church that we saw power rising up in people. It's through the church that, that the answers that this world needed then and now can be resolved. See, we keep looking to Congress to legislate a difference in our lives. We, we keep looking to the president to lead us into change into this world. We're looking to the Supreme Court to resolve and render decisions that will transform this nation. They have a part to play, but they are not the answer. 
The answer is in God's church. Jesus is sitting here saying, look at this. I created the greatest institution of all time and my people, believers, let's not talk about those who don't believe in Christ. My believers won't even look to my institution for the answer. The church is the greatest institution ever created on the face of the planet. And it's through the church that God wants to do his work. Why are we looking everywhere except where God has ordained to make a difference? We keep looking everywhere else but to Jesus. See, the answer to world peace, the answer to poverty, the answer to sickness, the answer to all the world's problems can be found in the church of Jesus Christ. God wants us to look to him for the answer. Y'all, it's the inside-outside game. That's why we, uh, uh, for, uh, uh, for first and third Sundays, we'll be worshiping in person, shameless plug. Second and fourth Sunday, we'll be worshiping virtually. But here it is, every fifth Sunday, we'll be going outside to minister to the world. We'll be worshiping through service. That's not a, just a cool thing or just a cool idea. No, that is us taking the church from the inside to the outside. Would you join us today in taking uh, the church from the inside to the outside game as Transforming Faith Church uh, uh, aspires to master the inside and outside game? Would you do that with us this morning? My question for you is, where do you line up in this story? Where? Have you neglected God's church? Have you said, oh, I'm good, or even I got to get my life together, I'm working some things out or whatever, and you're trying to do it separate from the church? Or are you in the church and you're fully in? You're, you're all in every Sunday, every Wednesday, Bible study. You're all in, and, and, but you're not uh, focusing on the outside game on what God has called for you to do. Y'all, it's all about the inside, the outside game. And my prayer is that you would understand that the church is God's idea. The church was launched by Jesus, and he wants us to continue his work through the church. Amen, amen, amen. Can I pray with you this morning? Can I pray with you this morning that you would see how the church is a critical aspect of your life? both inside and outside of the church as well. God, I thank you for this word this morning. God, our prayer is that uh, we would see your word more clearly than ever. And as we gain clarity in your word, God, we will embrace it and walk in it. God, that we would no longer uh, feel separated from the church, that we would no longer feel that the church is only relevant for inside the four walls, but we are able to take your church to the outside and do like the book of Acts said, go from house to house, understanding that we would gain favor with people and your church will grow by the, ad by the adding of people. God, we love you so much, we honor you. Thank you for this word. Thank you for your time in the Holy Spirit with us this morning. We love you, we honor you. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray.